Garden Showcase. Glad to be back with you again today. Uh, I've got just a few things that I want to share with you today. Uh, one being some vases. We're going to do a little vase talk with Mark on some Noritake vases that I found at an auction that are a little unusual in design. I also want to take you on a tour of what I've been doing with planting outside up to this point. Um, well, actually not all outside. Some of it's actually under the grow lights in the garage. I've got some uh, new seedlings started and I'm going to show you how I get those started and what types of things I have started under grow lights. Also, I'm going to take you back outside and we're going to look at the pots that we did last fall on Antique and Garden Showcase. The ones I did with pansies and kale. Of course, the kale's gone. The kale could not take the winter, but the pansies are hanging in there. So you'll see what I'm going to do to those pots to make them a little bit better. And I didn't say it in the little video clips that I did, but I'm going to add a few more pansies in there in just a few days to kind of fill in the gaps in those pots a little bit. But uh, come with us as we do a little face talk and go outside for some little bit of show and tell today. So I have to share with you all one of my unusual finds that I picked up at an auction recently. This is a Noritake three horn vase. It's kind of a strange looking mold and come to find out it's not one that's used too often. It's got a little bit of cobalt blue around the top, but the most unusual thing, and I'm going to pull this down so we can actually take a look at it closer is it has this little face that's inscribed that almost looks like a <laughs> a sheep ram's head maybe to go along with the horns but it's such an unusual vase it's almost like a tulipier but not hardly either i mean it, it could hold tulips and and be very pretty doing so but you can see that it is marked with the noritake markings which means it's newer than nippon but I just thought this was such an unusual design, I had to have it. And to make it even better, there was a pair. So I bought the pair. I thought that's kind of a unique looking piece. And if you're wondering, this vase in the middle, yes, that is um, a Nippon, very large, beautiful vase. One of my prized pieces in my collection that I love very, very, very much. It is in a rose pattern. And the gold is so intricate on that. It's even, it almost looks like it sparkles the way that they've got it beaded on there. So yeah, that's a terrific vase form as well. So, you know, these may not be a perfect match for the collection on top of the cabinet. In fact, that's really bright yellow. But I thought these were really unusual vases. I, I just had to have them for some reason. I thought that's just a different form than I've ever seen. So I hope you enjoy seeing these. Kind of unusual and rarish uh, Noritake vases. Welcome to my plant light shelf that I have out in our garage started. I have one of these on a heat mat. One of them is not. This one I have actually a heat mat installed underneath to warm that tray up because of the seeds that I have started. This tray, the entire thing, is filled with geranium chocolate cherry. And I'll put these up on the screen so you can see what geranium chocolate cherry looks like in this particular one. And in the other one, I have sweet peas, uh, mammoth choice mix. I have uh, lisianthus apricot. And I have the, the tall wispy purple ver verbena uh, that's growing in there. So this one requires a little bit more heat so I put the heat mat under that one to get those started. Now to do this, the trays are really easy. I get a plant starting mix. Um, and down here, I just use a general seed starting mix. Typically a miracle Grow. that's the one I'm using this year. miracle Grow seed starting mix. Sometimes I use Jiffy. Just depends on pretty much what the stores have. Um, this is what my local store had this year and I like their uh, water control formula for our area because it's it's humid It's dry. It's wet. It's everything here So it changes like the wind and this kind of keeps a nice balance in the soil this miracle grow um, Water control has been some of the best that I've used So when I put that in the tray one of the first things I do is I fill it I kind of get it all nice and clean and even and then the best garden tool that I have Believe it or not, a Sharpie pen. I take the Sharpie pen and make just a nice little hole or indention in each one of those cells. That way I can get the perfect depth and I can put the seed right in that hole as I'm going and planting along. 
The next thing that I have is um, these are some of the Proven Winners Radiance Caladiums that came out last year. I dug those seed or the uh, bulbs up at the end of the season, let them dry, and I'm trying to put them out here to see if they'll pre-start a little bit. So I'm anxious to see if these come back, how they're going to do, and if these do really well and come out the way I'm hoping that they will, I'm gonna use these in the front porch urns this year and save myself a little bit on planting costs out there. So right now, this is what I have started under my light system. In a little bit, I'll probably have some more. I'm going to do uh, some sunflowers and probably some garden vegetables out here as well. And for ne next, I'm gonna take you outside. We're gonna take a look at uh, the planters from last fall. The planters from last fall still had the pansies in it. I ripped the kale out of there the other day. It was looking pretty rough. And I'll show you what I got planted out there. So next, we're heading outside. All right, so we're out on the front porch and I'm looking at the planter that I did last fall. Um, as you can see, some of the pansies looking a little sad after ice storms and, and freezing rain and cold and whatever else, but they are still very much alive and they will come back out. I have picked up a few extras to kind of boost them, but I took out all the kale because the kale was looking really nasty looking. It was just done for. And I popped in a couple of hyacinth in there for my centerpiece in these pots just for a little spring color because I don't expect these to last too long before I get the things out here that I want for summertime started. But I always like to plant pansies in the fall because you really get two seasons out of them. They do come back in the spring. And as you can see, some nice blooms have already started to form. Um, some that ended up in the ground down here below it have bloomed all winter long and at Christmas time I had some out here just around the edges of the porch that were blooming and they still are I mean granted these things were covered in two inches of ice less than two weeks ago I and mean, you talk about a tough plant this one is one that you truly want for your garden especially in the fall and the spring so these planters will come back they look a little rough right now but they're on their way to a nice showy springtime so I'm working on these containers now, and these containers, I did the same thing as the front porch containers. I put a hyacinth in the middle, using some old pansies that I had in there last fall, and then I'm actually planting some new ones in. I picked up a little carton at the uh, local store today. I'm going to do the same thing down through here. I took the old kale out. I guess I need to take the old kale tags out. Right. Yep. Get those out of there. And uh, in those spots where they were at, I put a little bit of shake and feed fertilize that I had there and just in each pot to kind of get them going. I'm going to fill in those holes where the kale were at with some new pansies and then these should be ready for springtime too in just a few days. So our sad driveway space is going to be the focus of my spring trying to get things back in order. We did have three spruce trees down through here one decided to die the second one decided to grow tall and lean towards the driveway in the cars which was never good so we had it taken down so now we're left with the space and i'm thinking about doing a simple skinny spruce here the weeping white maybe at the beginning and maybe doing some hydrangeas in the background and kind of do some groupings around through here maybe actually take this into a shape so starting maybe right here and going into maybe like a peanut shape in this area and in the middle filling in with uh, hydrangeas and maybe doing some things like cannas in the middle and those wispy verbena um, kind of take it on the look of the uh, grand garden showcase the islands that they do there kind of an idea that i have with this wind out here today we go from ice storms to 70 degrees here in kentucky and it's just it's just the way it is I mean, you can see right now wind is going like crazy but uh, I'll take this over a nice storm any old day but that's one of the areas that's going to be a focus of springtime to get this mangy looking driveway to look like something again so it doesn't it just has no curb appeal at all so get this all cleaned up and maybe the sad little spruce will have some friends here pretty soon something else new that I'm going to try this year I was at my local Ollie store, which is kind of a bargain discount store. They have closeouts, they have overstock buys and whatever. And I was in there this year and in the spring, they had the Scott's brand all-in-one precision drip kit for pots and planters. And you get eight micro drippers and 50 feet of uh, the professional tubing that's in there. 
Uh, it says it covers up to eight pots or planters. So I'm going to try putting these in the antique um, iron urns outside to save me from having to water as much this year. I'm going to give this a whirl and see how this works. Uh, last year we had a lot of work done on plumbing out there, so I actually have a uh, place where I can hook this up to in the front of the house. And I'm going to run the cords to each one of the uh, planters to see how this truly works. I know a lot of uh, YouTubers out there are using drip systems on their gardens and whatever else. I have not tried that yet. In fact, I haul all my water to every planter uh, all season long. But this kit just looked, um, you know, like a pretty good maybe starter. I thought it was not overly expensive. And it had uh, all the directions on the back, fast and easy setup, how to connect, what different things you could connect to it. Um, tells you what's inside the package. It's got instructions, micro drippers, hose spigot connector, water flow reducer, 50 feet of tubing, eight tubing stakes, two end plugs, T-joints, insulation tools. The only additional tools needed are scissors. So that seems like that should be easy enough. And I actually bought two of these kits because I thought one is not going to be, um, you know, long enough to go. And some of my containers are really long and I don't think one dripper is going to be enough for one pot, especially when I get to the lengthy ones. I'm thinking maybe at least two or maybe three and some of those um, will be needed. So this is gonna be a project that I have coming up for the spring before I do any of my planting is to try to get these iron antique urns hooked up to drip this year. So new challenge for Mark outside. I'm looking forward to it.